All right, it looks like we're ready to roll. Okay, so our next speaker comes to us from the Biomedical Science Department in the College of Medicine, Dr. Jacob Codwell, and he's going to be speaking on a look at the impact of exercise training on cardiac function and apomedectin knockout mice. Take it away, Jacob. Thank you for the introduction. So obesity continues to be a growing health concern across the United States. You can define obesity as a body mass index greater than 30, that is relative to the individual's height and weight. Here I'm showing you the prevalence of obesity across the United States in 2011. The lightly shaded areas represent a lower percentage of the population that is obese, and the darker shaded area represents a higher percentage of the population that's obese. And as we can see, the years tricking on, we see a gradual darkening across the United States. And in 2018, all states had more than 20% of the population that were obese. This equals about 65 million individuals today. So why should we care? Of those individuals, that equals, those 65 million individuals equal all that shaded in red right here. Obesity is a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes. Obesity and type 2 diabetes are strongly linked to coronary artery disease and heart failure. Coronary artery disease just being a disease of the blood vessels of your heart. Interestingly, individuals with obesity show lower levels of this circulating adiponectin. And in addition to that, individuals with heart failure and coronary artery disease also show lower levels of adiponectin. So what is adiponectin? Adiponectin is found in the fat cells of our body. It's also produced in major organs, skeletal muscle, blood vessels, and the heart tissue. Adiponectin can lower fat accumulation in the liver. It can increase sugar or glucose uptake within the muscle. And it can also lower inflammation within the skeletal muscle, um, in the blood vessels of the body, and the heart. So when we think about obesity what, and what we can do to prevent it, two things might come to your mind, diet and exercise. We're going to forget about diet for now, and we're going to talk about exercise. So exercise training can improve the function of your blood vessels, improving delivery of blood to your skeletal muscles when you're working, and to the heart itself. Exercise training can also improve the, how you produce energy. It can lower fat cells, uh, within your body, so weight loss, for example. And it can also improve your skeletal muscle and your heart muscle. Finally, exercise has a very powerful anti-inflammatory effect within the skeletal muscle in the body. So we wanted to know if there was a potential link between exercise training and adiponectin. We wanted to see if adiponectin is necessary for cardiac adaptations to exercise training, given its lower levels in what I've previously discussed. So as far as exercise training is concerned, we used mice that lacked adiponectin. We took them through eight weeks of progressive treadmill training. We looked at pre and post measures of their heart function with an ultrasound, and we also looked at the blood vessels of their heart after training. So as far as our cardiac contractility is concerned, on a beat to beat basis, we're just looking at the ultrasound uh, to see how their heart is contracting. So here you can see this is a relaxation and a contraction, a relaxation and a contraction of the heart. So what did we see? In the mice that had adiponectin, we showed a 20% increase in the cardiac contractility within those mice. However, in the mice without adiponectin, after exercise training, we show a 12% reduction, so the cardiac contractility went down. Next is our cardiac ejection fraction. I want you to think of this as a percent of blood leaving the heart per beat. So our cardiac ejection fraction in the mice that had adiponectin after exercise training, we show a 12% increase in ejection in the adiponectin. adiponectin. We show a 9% decrease in the percent of blood leaving the heart. So what might be a potential mechanism? I've kind of already led to this a little bit. We also looked at the blood vessels of the heart itself, and we show a 50% reduction in the heart vessel's ability to dilate in the mice that do not have adiponectin. So I want you to consider, in our control group, we had a healthy dilation in the control mice, showing a good amount of blood flow. However, without adiponectin after exercise training, we don't see as much dilation, and therefore not as much blood flow can get to the tissue. So without blood getting to the tissue, we might not see those cardiovascular improvements in those adiponectin knockout mice. And this is due to the changes in the blood vessel uh, 
structure and function. Exercise, uh, other exercise measures that we're looking at in the future are mitochondrial changes and anti-inflammatory effects across the age span of these adiponectin or the mice that lack adiponectin. Thank you very much.